Time to get the day started. Yeah. <laughs> Let me give you the time and date stamp. It is 11 hours and 24 minutes into the day of Friday, June 6, 2014. Yeah, we're going into the weekend cleanup here. Um, a, a lot of reorganization for the weekend that's on the schedule. A lot of work's been done, so that means a lot of reorganization work has to get done this weekend. That's primarily the goal. So, uh, with that being said, that's all there is really to say today. It's, it's a short, uh, <laughs> short discussion. Uh, primarily because a uh, large chunk of our discussion has moved off into, um, uh, Insta vlogs. So, all right. I will see you around the office as, uh, uh, throughout the day we'll probably film different, you know, different things, show you different things around the office. So, uh, show you uh, what it's like to study here, what it's like to do the research, and uh, uh, have more of the sort of, I guess you could say, the behind the scenes chats. Anyways, that's it. See you later. Uh, well, I'm finally filming in the uh, kitchen diner, so <laughs> that's a good thing. So, good morning, everybody. This is our first step. Uh, uh, video of the day, so let me um, give you the time and date stamp. It is 12 hours and 15 minutes into the day of uh, Saturday. Let me get it. Saturday, June 7th, 2014. Yeah, that's our time and date stamp. <laughs> uh, it's been a while since I've been since I've been able to sort of get this place to some degree of working. So the uh, the kitchen diner is functional. It's working now. It's producing meals on a regular basis, so I don't have to go out to eat anymore. Uh, and but that means because it's being used, it has to be cleaned now more on a more regular basis. And that's what's going to happen today. I have to do a lot of cleaning today. Uh, hopefully uh, I'll be able to do a video montage of this and now that we've got a good setup for the camera we'll see how this ends up working out uh, hopefully we'll film more in here you know uh, film, uh, film, my, film me making stuff uh, take a look at the menu see what's on the menu and then uh, go from there so this will be uh, <laughs> a new segment now to the BTS blog until uh, the kitchen diner gets enough content and gets done well enough until you know and, and, and can move out on its own so this is the nesting place for the kitchen diner so <laughs> these will be this is the beginning test shots and we'll, we'll, so we'll go forward from here all right so uh i'll this is it for now i'll see you later in the day for more videos so i'm going to do a cleaning uh montage in here mm -hmm. <sighs> <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> um, do a cleaning montage, and then I'll probably maybe do some uh, some cooking videos. All right, we'll see what happens. All right, take it easy. Here we are once again, back in the kitchen diner. That's right, we're back in the kitchen diner. And as I said, we're gonna be doing a lot of the test shots for the new show in BTS vlogs. So that's why you're seeing this in here. The purpose of the kitchen diner is actually exploration. The goal here is to bring a large chunk of Asian village lifestyle into the kitchen, into uh, making food that uh, in many ways is very simple and inexpensive, but at the same time brings out the full flavor of the uh, food stalls 
that you would find in throughout most of Asia, throughout most of the open air markets. And so pretty much you're, you're testing out, you're trying out different flavors and it's done in such a way of, and this is what you'll see here is that uh, everything here is built on a, on a very minuscule budget. Um, I haven't paid more than $100 for any of the items in here. Uh, everything has been either bought on cl clearance or or, or 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 something like that or liquidation. I haven't bought anything at full price. There is a lot of reuse. For an example, for example here, let me just sort of uh, take this out. Uh, I buy the I used to buy these jellies, these uh, uh, jellies from um, my Asian store that I that I go to is called TNT, and I reuse it. So there's a lot of reuse in here f of the various different um, different uh, uh, objects. So you, when you buy something, you don't simply throw it out. You find a reuse for it. So here, this is a tin. Uh, uh, candies came in it. Now the tin is used uh, to store popcorn. There you go. There's popcorn on the inside there. And here's a cool thing with a little with the popcorn here. I spent uh, I think it was ten dollars for this uh, little ceramic pot here. It has, it has a lid to it. Put uh, some vegetable oil, some popcorn in there. Put some, some some vegetable oil popcorn. Put it in the microwave for about six. Minute, six minute and ten, ten, six minutes and ten seconds, and you've got popcorn, and it's much cheaper and better than if you bought the uh, uh, microwave popcorn. In other words, uh, for when you spend, uh, like say, twelve bucks on a package of uh, uh, of uh, microwave popcorn, you can spend two dollars and get twice as much. And that's that's kind of how the diner works here. And now I'm working on a new sandwich. I'm in here. I'm gonna make a new sandwich. And uh, this is going to be an exploration of the Vietnamese banh mi sandwich that uses, again, a variety of different flavors. And you're trying different things out. Sometimes you like things, sometimes you don't like things. Sometimes you like things better, and other times you don't like things so much. So it's kind of, you're trying to sort of figure out how to um, balance flavors, really. That's what it is, is about balancing flavors uh, in your life. So, and uh, doing it for cheap, for cheap, for, for inexpensive. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I'm going to make my banh mi sandwich now and I will uh, talk to you later. Be prepared to have what you know challenged by Cyborg Alpha TV Network. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Yeah, it's time for another segment of the BTS vlogs. I'm trying to be consistent with this and uh, continue on. <laughs> it is six hours and fifteen minutes into the day of Sunday, June eighth, two thousand fourteen, and yesterday was the first day I vlogged. Uh, from within the kitchen diner, we did. Uh, I did. A, uh, I started adding uh, chunks of te uh, chunks of the show, uh, the kitchen diner into uh, BTS vlogs. We're gonna do that sort of. Uh, a lot of the tests, a lot of the initial shots are gonna be done there. So, so I, I'm gonna be brought in here. So that, uh, you know, just to test it out to sort of see how uh, things end up working out. So you'll see that. I've also been working on my notes, and so we're, we're going to get ready for another uh, Insta Vlogs. Basically, um, I'll be doing more Insta Vlogs this week. Uh, I'll be doing uh, more IMO, and I'll also be doing uh, uh, a series on um, Buddha, Buddha and uh, Buddhism. It seems to be something that's, that, that I'm finding a lot of in, uh, resources on. I've had a lot of resources before, but there needs to be a further explanation as to 
Uh, and this is simple. We're gonna go. We're gonna look beyond the obvious, and I will demonstrate what the obvious is, and then go beyond that. <clears throat> this is sort of say the whole goal here of this channel is to challenge what you know. You know, to start thinking about things in in, in a different manner than maybe you've thought about them before. We all have, to a certain degree. Uh, no matter what grouping we're a part of, every grouping has a set of standard knowledge, or what they consider to be standard knowledge or common knowledge. And this is often paraded around as truth. This is the way things are. And this is not, uh, what we're doing is, is in terms of challenging what you know, isn't going out and being skeptical and being sort of uh, challenging somebody else's views and ideas. It's in many ways also challenging your own. And this is where it comes from itself. It challenges your own ideas. And when you start challenging your own ideas and how you understand things, then the understanding that you have can grow for, further and go beyond what we call standard knowledge. And more often than not, the standard knowledge is the approved knowledge. It's sort of what you call textbook knowledge. It's what you find in textbooks. Excuse me again. And as I said, textbook knowledge is actually rather limited. It's, uh, things are not, well, reality is not textbook. Textbook only gives you an overview of what's there. It gives you sort of a brief introduction to it. And I do say brief because there's so much to, to it that, that uh, once you really do get beyond the textbook, there is a significant degree of, uh, of understanding that lies beyond the textbook. So that you can uh, you can sort of put the argument uh, forward that the textbook is simply the beginning. That's your introduction, and then you move forward from there on out. But what happens is that most people uh, uh, most people uh, limit themselves to the textbook. In other words, for most people, the knowledge that they'll have, the total sum of their knowledge, is the textbook itself. They, in other words, they will not go outside the bounds of the textbook. And while this may be the case for the average person, this is not the case here. And this is why we, in some ways, are sort of different from PBS. Is that PBS, in many ways, sticks with the textbook knowledge. It stays within that textbook. So view uh, PBS as an educational channel, but it's an educational channel in the sense that it sticks within the textbook. It does what it's supposed to do. You know, the expectations of the knowledge in terms of the limits of the knowledge that you get there are what you could say pretty much textbook. What we're doing here at Cyborg Alpha TV Network is going beyond that uh, textbook knowledge and challenging ourselves to understand things beyond the textbook. So we're going to break down the textbook, we're going to break down, stand, break down standard knowledge and start moving beyond it. And so, and again, this is not something that's going to be exciting in terms of there's not going to be a lot of flyby graphics, there's not going to be, uh, you know, uh, me wandering, you know, and having this discussion while, you know, this, this, this background scenery going on. It's the discussion here. It's in many cases my experience going beyond that, and then you can sort of take my experience not as a guru, but as an example of one uh, as an example of one means of going beyond the textbook, and then use it as a guide to see what you can do. And this is sort of how we're going to approach these different things, and this is how it's sort of going to uh, sort of evolve or progress from here. Anyways, our time is now up. 
I will talk to you later in the kitchen diner. We'll talk more about this and how it relates to food. Uh, yeah, <laughs> later on. All right, I'll see you later. Be prepared to have what you know challenged by Cyborg Alpha TV Network. Well, good morning, everybody. Yeah, it's time for another segment of the BTS vlog. Let's get started right away with the, the uh, time and date stamp. It is 12 hours and 4 minutes into the day of Monday, June 9th, 2014. Okay. Uh, starting off with a new, with a new uh, work schedule this week. It will allow me to get more work done. Uh, I tested it out last week. It worked out pretty good. It will entail me uh, posting, uh, I should be posting videos almost every single day, uploading videos. So basically five days a week I'll be uploading videos, two days I won't. Uh, and that should be enough to sort of push things along. Uh, I have enough uh, on my schedule that I'm back to a full schedule. This is like leveling up again. It appears almost to be that just every, just about every two months, I'm at a point where I'm leveling up again. Uh, I think it's two months. I'm not really too sure. But I've sort of been in a position where I've kind of, uh, this is what happened over the weekend. I lost my spatial awareness. And what I mean by spatial awareness? Sometimes you get into a point of fatigue that um, when you are in terms of uh, what day it is and what time it is is lost and I mean your body does know when it's a night time and does know when it's tired it does know when it's you know supposed to be sleeping or awake normally and typically but when you get into a sleep deprived mode then that kind of disappears on you. It doesn't that doesn't happen? You kind of lose that sense of uh, awareness, and that's kind of where it was on over, over the weekend. Uh, but I did uh, catch up on my sleep on sun on Sunday. So Sunday I slept some extra. I actually did some extra sleeping on Saturday too, but uh, it wasn't enough to resolve. Uh, the fatigue for Sunday, so I'm still feeling a little bit. I'm just getting up now, anyway. So it's going to take me a while to uh, uh, sort of uh, get moving. I did my initial check, and I was when I get up, I just don't, I don't come right here. I do an initial check of the systems, and then I come back here. Uh, it's just a matter of the systems need to be checked first. That's the first thing you have to do: check your systems take care of any issues and then come back here and film so uh, this is sort of the second thing of the day this is sort of the beginning of the sorry this is the beginning of the day and you already have in your mind uh, a sense of what you want to do for the day I do anyways and it, I, I'm still kind of in the bizarre um, state another state of mind and it has to do with, uh, uh, as I said before, I do a lot of lucid dreaming. And uh, most of yesterday and today, uh, most of yesterday when I was sleeping yesterday and, and this morning, I did an enormous amount of lucid dreaming, dreaming. And for some reason, my dreams always go back to the 1930s, 1940s. Uh, and it... it, it, it Typically, your dreams are supposed to be have details of things that you've already you've already seen in them. In other words, unless you have unless you it, it, your dreams can only be made of things you've experienced already. And yet, somehow, the dreams I have they're not they're things there are things I haven't experienced. There there are places I haven't been. Now, how that's actually constructed? How something you've never experienced and never really seen? is constructed by the mind 
is kind of beyond me, you know. And this is sort of looking at, uh, you know, this the, the, going into dream research, going into some of the the, the, the research of sleep, and because they're now talking about some of the research reports coming out saying that, uh, you know, a short period of time they're going to be able to start, you know, influencing dreams. Well, you know, with electric, with with the with uh, Elect, uh, with electric fields, but the thing is, they've been working on that for a long time. This this is something that isn't new. They've been thinking that you can control dreams for a long time with electric fields, and they've been sort of fiddling fiddling with this on and off since the nineteen hundreds. And they really haven't gotten anywhere with it. They've gotten bits and pieces, but uh, anyways, the the standard scientific thought is that uh, dreams are all part of you. That there's nothing there's nothing more beyond you, and blah 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 blah. You know, that's the whole spiel that you know. We are simply a uh, chaotic uh, order of <laughs> chaotic order, a chaotic accident uh, of the cosmos, and uh, we are all, all our chemical and electrical reactions. So, if that's the case, if we are simply the sum total of what we are, and a sum total of our experiences, then why, in, in cases like this, when you have these lucid dreams? Uh, and for my case, in, in, in particularly my case, why am I dreaming of things? Why do I see and experience things uh, that I've never experienced before? In other words, if, I'm, I'm not talking about unusual things. I'm talking about things like beds, closets, uh, <laughs> rooms. Uh, I mean, some of it, some of the places, the, the decor is 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 rather you know vivid. You can sort of see you know that this isn't a modern room. This is the the, the you know, furniture could easily be anywhere from from 1930 to the, to 1960s. Um, the closets are all wood. Uh, they're all old uh, suitcases. Suitcases used to be made out of card cardboard, so there's uh, suitcases made out of cardboard. Uh, I mean, in other words, there's a lot of old stuff in there. There's trunks, and you know, it, 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 and there's enough detail that you can sort of say, "Wait a minute, here, none of the stuff." I've ever encountered, and it becomes bizarre because uh, you have never uh, seen these things before. There's something new. You're exploring something new, particularly if you're a person who likes to explore, you know, who likes to see something new. Then you know, this is yay. This is something that's that's cool. So you pay attention to it. And it draws your attention. And so, if this, you know, if, if you are the sum total of what you are, you know, of, of your experiences and, and and your your chemical experiences, then why does this exist? Why Outside of you know, then this is where you start start saying, well, maybe there's something more, more beyond more than what they're saying. Maybe there's something more beyond the textbook. Maybe there's something more to life than we're being led on, that we're being uh, led to understand. So, anyways, that's kind of the uh, the the thoughts I'm being led off with uh, for the week. We'll see how this shapes up for IMO in in, in the Insta vlogs for the week. Uh, so I'll bring my thoughts out there in more detail, uh, you know, <laughs> there. Anyways, uh, I will see you, uh, later on today. All right. Bye. Be prepared to have what you know challenged by Cyborg Alpha TV Network. Good morning, everybody. I'm coming from coming. I'm coming here to you. I'm coming to you from the um, kitchen diner. So good morning. I'm not in the back room. I've got this uh, now set up so that it works uh, very well. Let me give you the time and date stamp. It is 14 hours. And, uh, yeah, it is 14 hours into the day of uh, Tuesday, June 10th, 2014. And the reason why I'm coming to you from here has simply to do with the fact oh, I have one more thing to do. I am back. <laughs> well, interruptions are going to happen, so <laughs> that's kind of the way they go. There's not really much you can do about it, so. Anyways, I'm in the kitchen diner. We're going to be starting to film here more often because we are eventually moving towards our first episode of the kitchen diner. I'm going to try this out. One of the things I'm working on uh, this week, next actually the next couple of weeks, I just started it yesterday. 
Uh, I've got my walk behind me and get it all set up. And I'm going to try and, and replicate a lot of the street food uh, that I've been seeing. I've been getting a lot of these uh, food documentaries uh, from China, from, uh, from Asia. And there are a lot on the street vendors. And I looked at what they do, what they were doing, and what I'm going to try to do is try to replicate what they did. And I think it's a lot. I learned from my grandmothers and from my uh, my aunts and uh, the other relatives who cook. It's not about the ingredients you put in. There's a technique. So if you watch the show and you watch them again and again, you know, record them, so you can watch them again and again. You can see the technique. You can start learning the techniques of how they do what they do. And then from there, you have to go, you go from learning simple things like sauces, vinegars, different flavors, uh, uh, how flavors combine. If you're going to test out new flavors, how to put a new flavor in there just a little bit to sort of see if you like it, if you don't like it. Uh, you know, in other words, you want to sort of use the kitchen in, in, in a very experimental manner. Uh, trying to sort of find a uh, direction, if you will. So, that being said, that's what we're going to do here. We're going to sort of try to replicate um, everything from breakfast to dinner uh, here on on the walk. Try to do everything here, and we're also going to look at the cost because we want to keep it cheap as street food. And this is it. If you, if, if you can learn the stuff, bring a lot of the village ideas, which are very inexpensive, into a city environment, you can reduce the cost of living significantly. And, you're, and the quality of the food that you're going to have is going to is going to go up. So in other words, you, this is something you can do at home. This is something, if you don't mind spending the time, you can actually learn how to do this. And uh, instead of having your food costs go up, the food costs will go down. But the quality of the food of the food will go up. Anyways, that's it for now. I said we're going to try to keep this uh, short, short, so <laughs> on to the rest of the day. Alrighty, see you around. <laughs>30. Uh, it's about 2.30, so about 14 hours and 30 minutes into the day. I don't know what day this is. I know it's Wednesday, but uh, I think maybe June 11th to 12th. Not exactly sure. Uh, time for another walk. <laughs> Going food shopping again, so. But I don't have that much to get. I just have a little bit to get. But uh, whether, regardless of whether I have a lot or a little, half a walk to go get it, so. This is going to suffice for the uh, morning uh, BTS vlog in terms of the segment. I do, uh, I have been forgetting to do the evening. The last few days have been weird. Uh, I've been feeling really tired again. So I've been doing a lot of sleeping. But I've also been doing a lot of... Uh, 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 the progress hasn't really slowed down that much because uh, my efficiency model that I use, the efficiency mode, uh, is good enough that uh, it allows me to keep moving forward. So <laughs> I'm happy with that. So when I get back, I'll do the rest of the filming for the day. There are some new, if you look at the uh, YouTube channels, there's some new changes there. Uh, I'm, you know, fixing things up. The network mode is becoming more visible, so we're now operating a Cyborg Alpha TV network. And, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's the way things go. Uh, anyways, uh, I'll talk to you maybe a little bit, we'll get closer to uh, TNT. And if I have anything to say. Alright, take it easy. I was right. It is uh, June 11th. And uh, the receipt that I have from TNT shows that it's about uh, 3.46 in the afternoon. So that's uh, 
15 hours and 46 minutes into the day of June of Wednesday, June uh, 11th, 2014. So yeah, I just finished uh, uh, food shopping. I'm now on my way back to the office. Gonna unpack and then sort of uh, schedule out the rest of the day because this is sort of the beginning of the day right now. I haven't done any of the scheduling for the day. Uh, so that has to be done and we'll see, you know, what's going to get done and what's not going to get done. <laughs> uh, anyways, we're using, the, uh, we're using the new system, the new upgrade again. Uh, things are, you know, always upgrade the adjust things and this is a new adjustment so it gives me more capacity to do things. We'll see how this ends up working out. Uh, <laughs> you know. Uh, if it works out well enough, you'll see more of me, so, <laughs> if you want that, alright. Anyways, I'll see you back at the office. Democratic Earth. Earth.